the universe consists mostly of less than 100 naturally occurring elements. Yet there is an immense diversity and complexity reflected in not only the substances that can be found in the universe, but also some that can be found within our own bodies. How is it that we have such a vast majority of matters that exist, but only about 100 simple building blocks called atoms to work with? The answer is that the naturally occurring atoms are not found alone. They are found in molecules through the process of chemical bondings. The combinations of chemicals that can be built with these various combinations is so vast that it can give rise to the natural phenomenon that occur to the complexity of life. But why does this happen? The answer to this question lies in the understanding the role that energy plays in the formation of molecules and its roots of quantum mechanics. Why are atoms prevalent mostly as molecules? This is because of energy. All natural systems tend to adopt a lower state of energy. And if we look at hydrogen, which exists of one proton and one electron, but is normally found in the molecule of H2, by incorporating the role of quantum mechanics in the formation of hydrogen molecules, we begin to understand why other atoms also form molecules in order to adopt a lower state of energy. The electron forms a cloud around the nucleus, and the shape of the cloud contains the wave function. The wave function of the hydrogen atom represents the probabilities of the possible results if we were to measure its properties where the atom will be in its ground state. But when the second hydrogen atom is introduced into the system, first, the electrons which are both negatively charged repel each other. But the electron of the hydrogen atom 1 starts to get affected by the positive charge of the proton in the hydrogen atom 2, vice versa. So, the electrons of, the, of each of the two atoms tend to get pulled slightly to meet the other one's protons. If they get close enough, the cloud begins to spread between the two atoms. For both of the atoms to be perfectly coordinated, there's a spot where the bond distance between the atoms result in the lowest potential energy. To prevent the atomic cloud from repelling, numerous attractions take place and what happens to the entire system is determined by the total energy of the system. To calculate the total energy of the system, you take count of 1. The kinetic energy of each atom, 2. The potential energy between the two protons, the potential energy between the two electrons, and the potential energy between each electron and proton. This can be represented by a graph. As we move from right to left, you can see what happens to the energy when the two atoms go from being far apart to start to come closer to each other. The dip of the graph represents the lowest energy state. If the distance of the protons get any smaller, the energy goes up. And if the distance gets larger, it also goes up but not as much. So the tip of the curve is where the two atoms are both content to stay in, which is the lowest energy state. As you can see between the two graphs, the energy of the two atom system is less than the energy of the two separate atom systems. Therefore, they will be naturally combined to form a molecule forming two types of bonds, covalent bonds and ionic bonds. Therefore, the formation of molecules and molecular bonds are the fundamental foundations of other scientific theories like the electron band theory of solids. This theory describes the quantum states that electrons take in metal solids and their behaviors. If we recall the formation of molecular bonds, suppose one atom is found in the 1s quantum state and the other in the 2p quantum state and they form a bond. The outer electron probability overlap to form a molecular orbit and that they obtain a lower state of energy. The 1s atomic orbital combines with the 2p atomic orbital. The two atomic orbitals split energies. In the diagram, the y-axis represents the energy and the x-axis represents the separation distance, which means if we go to the right along the x-axis, the distance between the 1s and the 2p atoms decrease. The 1s orbital is lower in energy than the 2p orbital. As the two atoms approach one another, the 1s atomic orbital splits into two energy levels. Same goes with the 2p orbitals. 
Therefore, we can think of this lower one as having an electronic spin. An electronic spin is the angular momentum carried by particles. And the oneness orbital has an electronic spin of negative one half. And for the upper one, which is a 2p orbital, has an electronic spin of positive one half. Only the overlap of the lower in energy orbitals will lead to the formation of molecules, which means that the combination of negative one half of the 1s and the positive of one half of the 2p will lead to the formation of molecules. In solid metals, many atoms combine their individual electron density orbitals to form many energy splits. Because we have so much atoms combined in, inside our metals, we have so much of the splits that take place. There are so much splits to the point that they basically form a continuous band, but there's a gap between the two bands, and we call this gap the continuous energy regions. The band theory of solids describes the way that our individual atoms and electrons within that solid metal actually interact, which means that this region between the bands is the gap energy, which means that the electrons cannot be found in this region of energy. For example, in this diagram, the y-axis is the energy and the x-axis is the separation distance between the nuclei of the atoms. Our electrons can be found all around the nucleus and notice that the electrons that are closest to the nucleus are lowered in energy, therefore are more stable. If we comply this diagram to the diagram of the continuous band, the colored regions show the, that allowed energy quantums. The blank regions between the colored bands are the energy gaps, where en electrons cannot be found. But the highest band region is called the Fermi energy level which is where the highest energy quantum state where electrons can exist in where our metro solids is an absolute zero. The electrons that are found closer to the nucleus are pulled more strongly and experience more electrostatic force. They will have lower energy and they will be more stable. But on the other hand, the electrons that are found nearest to the Fermi energy level can gain enough energy to move freely inside the solid which means that if the solid reaches a certain temperature, the electrons can roam freely around the entire solid, unlike the electrons closer to the nucleus. That is all I have for this video. Thank you for watching.